Questions are being asked as to how 5,000 encrypted personal communications devices could have been tampered with after Tuesday's unprecedented high-tech attack on Hezbollah members. The owner of the Taiwanese company linked to the pages was quick to distance himself and his company Gold Apollo from the attack. I am the chairman of Gold Apollo. I am here to explain to you today that we have established a long-term certification with BAC in the past three years. We have an agency cooperation relationship and a cooperation agreement. We license our company's trademark to them, and the products discovered in this explosion are not our products. Meanwhile, there's been speculation in the Israeli press as to the timing of the attack. It seems like there are several reports that show that this was not a planned, premeditated attack for yesterday. It was something that Israel had in the works and possibly had to use it or lose it yesterday because apparently Hezbollah started to be suspicious. The scale of the attack has not been seen before. A small amount of high explosive was likely added to each pager and detonated when the vibration function of the pager was manually switched off, ensuring the person being targeted was within range of the blast. However, the impact on Hezbollah remains unclear, since these pages were not the only means of communication for the group. It is true that uh, the pages have been compromised and the way they, that they were conceived it made it extremely difficult, almost impossible, for any routine or even expert check to identify the explosive in the system. Now, there is another system that Hezbollah has that is very secure, works completely differently. The old pages still exist. More than 100,000 Hezbollahis have the old pages. Only the new pages have been compromised. With several dead and thousands injured, there is no doubt Hezbollah has suffered a setback, the size and sophistication of which is now only beginning to emerge. Alex Katopoulos, Al Jazeera. Let's talk about this with uh, Jody Westby, Chief Executive of Global Cyber Risk, in a bit more detail. Now she joins us from Washington, D.C. Welcome to Al Jazeera. So, pages, of course, in many people's minds, are very much outdated communication devices, aren't they? I mean, firstly, explain why Hezbollah was using them at all. Well, they were harder for them to trans uh, to intercept and to trace the communications. So they went back to old technology. So they thought their communication line would be more secure. And subsequently, of course, this pager network, as you say or suggest, a shield against, I suppose, hacking, has instead become this weapon of mass destruction. I mean. How much do you think this is a setback for an organization like Hezbollah? Is there, for instance, a fallback communication system they could employ to continue uh, operating? Um, well, this is digital warfare. And what they did essentially was try to take out a line of communication for Hezbollah. And clearly it was planted, planned, um, for patiently planned for some period of time. And so it, it was effective. I wouldn't call it a weapon of mass destruction. I would just call it an autonomous weapon and um, a, a, an executed um, military action. But it was certainly one that impacted civilians and others around. So it's questionable whether it was really within the laws of armed conflict. There are, of course, uh, an awful lot of questions, aren't there, over where these pages came from. The Taiwanese company Golden Apollo saying they were made in Hungary by another firm. No evidence as yet uh, that that is the case. No sign of any production line. I mean, what would it take, in your mind, in your expert opinion, to weaponize these pages and what appears to have been an industrial scale? It wouldn't take it, it would take some knowledge and expertise and careful planning and a lot of connections along the way, um, which it sounds like that this woman that was the representative for the company in Hungary, BAC, that if they had done more investigation into who they were doing business with, Gold Apollo maybe wouldn't have done business with them. But there's always that little wink link. And it, this attack is not so unprecedented. Remember Stuxnet, when the U.S. was blamed for planting back doors and blowing up a uh, Iranian uh, nuclear centrifuge capability in Iran. 
And then also in 1982, we put black back doors in software that was sold through Canada to Soviets and ended up blowing up the Trans-Siberian pipeline. And so these kinds of attacks have happened before, but this is one that just was most recent and it also unfortunately was conducted in a way that it wasn't a pipeline or a piece of equipment, it involved real people and civilians. Uh, and Jody, of course, now that this deadly genie is out of the, of the bottle, Israel playing its hand here, sending a very clear message to its adversaries and others around the world, is this, in your opinion now, the new face of warfare? Well, yes, this, these are autonomous weapons. So you'll see through cyber hacking, you would see through the use of, of tools like Pegasus, uh, the spyware that that was um, through the NSO Israeli company. You will see the le technology leveraged in ways and combined with kinetic warfare. So there can be um, a, a military advantage. This is what countries are going to do. And unfortunately, leaders around the world are very slow to address this issue within the laws of armed conflict. And that is worrisome. All right, um, Jody Westby, Chief Executive of Global Cyber Risk. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Algeria.